Palestinian nationalism is the national movement of the Palestinian people for self-determination in and sovereignty over Palestine. Originally formed in opposition to Zionism, Palestinian nationalism later internationalized and attached itself to other ideologies. Thus it has rejected the historic occupation of the Palestinian territories by Israel and the non-domestic Arab rule by Egypt over the Gaza Strip and Jordan over the West Bank. Background Before the development of modern nationalism, loyalty tended to focus on a city or a particular leader. The term, nationalismus, translated as nationalism, was coined by Johann Gottfried Herder in the late 1770s. Palestinian nationalism has been compared to other nationalist movements, such as Pan Arabism and Zionism. Some nationalists argue that the nation was always there, indeed it is part of the natural order, even when it was submerged in the hearts of its members." In keeping with this philosophy, Al-Quds University states that although, "...Palestine was conquered in times past by ancient Egyptians, Hittites, Philistines, Israelites, Assyrians, Babylonians, Persians, Romans, Muslim Arabs, Mamluks, Ottomans, the British, the Zionists, the population remained constant." and is now still Palestinian." Zachary J. Foster argued in a 2015 Foreign Affairs article that, "...based on hundreds of manuscripts, Islamic court records, books, magazines, and newspapers from the Ottoman period 1516 to 1918, it seems that the first Arab to use the term Palestinian was Farid George Kassab, a Beirut-based Orthodox Christian." He explained further that Kassab's 1909 book Palestine, Hellenism, and Clericalism noted in passing that the Orthodox Palestinian Ottomans call themselves Arabs, and are in fact Arabs, despite describing the Arabic speakers of Palestine as Palestinians throughout the rest of the book. Foster later revised his view in a 2016 piece published in Palestine Square, arguing that already in 1898 Khalil Bidas used the term Palestinian to describe the region's Arab inhabitants in the preface to a book he translated from Russian to Arabic. In the book, Akim Olesnitsky's A Description of the Holy Land, Bidas explained that the summer agricultural work in Palestine began in May with the wheat and barley harvest. After enduring the entire summer with no rain at all, leaving the water cisterns depleted and the rivers and springs dry. The Palestinian peasant waits impatiently for winter to come, for the season's rain to moisten his fossilized fields. Foster explained that this is the first instance in modern history where the term Palestinian or Philistini appears in Arabic. He added, though, that the term Palestinian had already been used decades earlier in Western languages by the British James Finn, the German Ludwig Schneller, and the American James Wells. In his 1997 book, Palestinian Identity, the Construction of Modern National Consciousness, historian Rashid Khalidi notes that the archaeological strata that denote the history of Palestine, encompassing the Biblical, Roman, Byzantine, Umayyad, Fatimid, Crusader, Ayyubid, Mamluk and Ottoman periods, form part of the identity of the modern-day Palestinian people, as they have come to understand it over the last century, but derides the efforts of some Palestinian nationalists to attempt to anachronistically read back into history a nationalist consciousness that is in fact relatively modern. Khalidi stresses that Palestinian identity has never been an exclusive one, with Arabism, religion, and local loyalties playing an important role. He argues that the modern national identity of Palestinians has its roots in nationalist discourses that emerged among the peoples of the Ottoman Empire in the late 19th century which sharpened following the demarcation of modern nation-state boundaries in the Middle East after World War I. He acknowledges that Zionism played a role in shaping this identity, though it is a serious mistake to suggest that Palestinian identity emerged mainly as a response to Zionism. Khalidi describes the Arab population of British Mandatory Palestine as having overlapping identities, with some or many expressing loyalties to villages, regions, a projected nation of Palestine, an alternative of inclusion in a greater Syria, an Arab national project, as well as to Islam. He writes that local patriotism could not yet be described as nation-state nationalism. 
Israeli historian Chaim Gerber, a professor of Islamic history at Hebrew University of Jerusalem, traces Arab nationalism back to a 17th century religious leader, Mufti Kher al Din al Ramli, who lived in Ramla. He claims that Kher al Din al Ramli's religious edicts fatwa, plural fatawa, collected into final form in 1670 under the name al Fatawa al Kharia, attest to territorial awareness. These fatawa are a contemporary record of the time, and also give a complex view of agrarian relations. Mufti Kher al Din al Ramli's 1670 collection entitled Al Fatawa al Kharia mentions the concepts Falastin, Baladuna, our country, Al Sham, Syria, Misr, Egypt, and Diyar country, in senses that appear to go beyond objective geography. Gerber describes this as embryonic territorial awareness, though the reference is to social awareness rather than to a political one. Baruch Kimmerling and Joel Migdal consider the 1834 Arab Revolt in Palestine as the first formative event of the Palestinian people, whereas Benny Morris attests that the Arabs in Palestine remained part of a larger pan Islamist or pan Arab national movement. In his book The Israel Palestine Conflict One Hundred Years of War, James L. Gelvin states that Palestinian nationalism emerged during the interwar period in response to Zionist immigration and settlement. Quote, However, this does not make Palestinian identity any less legitimate. The fact that Palestinian nationalism developed later than Zionism and indeed in response to it does not in any way diminish the legitimacy of Palestinian nationalism or make it less valid than Zionism. All nationalisms arise in opposition to some other. Why else would there be the need to specify who you are? and all nationalisms are defined by what they oppose. Bernard Lewis argues it was not as a Palestinian nation that the Palestinian Arabs of the Ottoman Empire objected to Zionists, since the very concept of such a nation was unknown to the Arabs of the area at the time and did not come into being until later. Even the concept of Arab nationalism in the Arab provinces of the Ottoman Empire had not reached significant proportions before the outbreak of World War I. Daniel Pipes asserts that no Palestinian Arab people existed at the start of 1920, but by December it took shape in a form recognizably similar to today's. Pipes argues that with the carving of the British Mandate of Palestine out of Greater Syria, the Arabs of the new mandate were forced to make the best they could of their situation, and therefore began to define themselves as Palestinian. Topic: History. The collapse of the Ottoman Empire was accompanied by an increasing sense of Arab identity in the empire's Arab provinces, most notably Syria, considered to include both northern Palestine and Lebanon. This development is often seen as connected to the wider reformist trend known as al nada awakening, sometimes called the Arab Renaissance which in the late 19th century brought about a redefinition of Arab cultural and political identities with the unifying feature of Arabic. Under the Ottomans, Palestine's Arab population mostly saw themselves as Ottoman subjects. In the 1830s however, Palestine was occupied by the Egyptian vassal of the Ottomans, Muhammad Ali and his son Ibrahim Pasha. The Palestinian Arab revolt was precipitated by popular resistance against heavy demands for conscripts, as peasants were well aware that conscription was little more than a death sentence. Starting in May 1834 the rebels took many cities, among them Jerusalem, Hebron and Nablus. In response, Ibrahim Pasha sent in an army, finally defeating the last rebels on 4 August in Hebron. While Arab nationalism, at least in an early form, and Syrian nationalism were the dominant tendencies along with continuing loyalty to the Ottoman state, Palestinian politics were marked by a reaction to foreign predominance and the growth of foreign immigration, particularly Zionist. The Egyptian occupation of Palestine in the 1830s resulted in the destruction of Acre and thus, the political importance of Nablus increased. The Ottomans wrested back control of Palestine from the Egyptians in 1840-41. As a result, the Abd al-Hadi clan, who originated in Araba in the Sal Araba region in northern Samaria, rose to prominence. 
loyal allies of Jezer Pasha and the Tukans, they gained the governorship of Jabal Nablus and other Sanjaks. In 1887, the Mudasaraflik of Jerusalem was constituted as part of an Ottoman government policy dividing the Vilayet of Greater Syria into smaller administrative units. The administration of the Mudasaraflik took on a distinctly local appearance. Michel Campos records that. Later, after the founding of Tel Aviv in 1909, conflicts over land grew in the direction of explicit national rivalry. Zionist ambitions were increasingly identified as a threat by Palestinian leaders, while cases of purchase of lands by Zionist settlers and the subsequent eviction of Palestinian peasants aggravated the issue. The programs of four Palestinian nationalist societies Jamayat al wall AFAF Brotherhood and Purity, al Jamiya al Kariya al Islamiyya, Shirkat al Iqtisad al Falastini al Arabi, and Shirkat al Tihara al Watniya al Iqtisadiyya were reported in the newspaper Falastin in June 1914 by letter from R. Abu al Salad. The four societies has similarities in function and ideals, the promotion of patriotism, educational aspirations, and support for national industries. Palestinian nationalist groups Notables Palestinian Arab Ayan notables were a group of urban elites at the apex of the Palestinian socio-economic pyramid where the combination of economic and political power dominated Palestinian Arab politics throughout the British Mandate period. The dominance of the Ayan had been encouraged and utilized during the Ottoman period and later, by the British during the Mandate period, to act as intermediaries between the authority and the people to administer the local affairs of Palestine. The al Husayni family were a major force in rebelling against Muhammad Ali who governed Egypt and Palestine in defiance of the Ottoman Empire. This solidified a cooperative relationship with the returning Ottoman authority. The family took part in fighting the Qaisi family in an alliance with a rural lord of the Jerusalem area Mustafa Abu Ghosh, who clashed with the tribe frequently. The feuds gradually occurred in the city between the clan and the Khalidis that led the Qaisis, however these conflicts dealt with city positions and not Qaisi Yamani rivalry. The Husaynis later led resistance and propaganda movements against the Young Turks who controlled the Ottoman Empire and more so against the British Mandate government and early Zionist immigration. Jamal al Husayni was the founder and chairman of the Palestine Arab Party in 1935. Emil Ghori was elected as General Secretary, a post he held until the end of the British Mandate in 1948. In 1948, after Jordan had occupied Jerusalem, King Abdullah of Jordan removed Hajj Amin al Husayni from the post of Grand Mufti of Jerusalem and banned him from entering Jerusalem. The Nashashibi family had particularly strong influence in Palestine during the British Mandate period from 1920 until 1948. Throughout this period, they competed with the Husaynis, for dominance of the Palestinian Arab political scene. As with other Ayan their lack of identification with the Palestinian Arab population allowed them to rise as leaders but not as representatives of the Palestinian Arab community. The Nashashibi family was led by Raghib Nashashibi, who was appointed as mayor of Jerusalem in 1920. Raghib was an influential political figure throughout the British Mandate period, and helped form the National Defense Party in 1934. He also served as a minister in the Jordanian government, governor of the West Bank, member of the Jordanian Senate, and the first military governor in Palestine. The Tukan family, originally from northern Syria, was led by Hajj Salah Pasha Tukan in the early 18th century and were the competitors of the Nimr family in the Jabal Nablus, the subdistrict of Nablus and Janin. Members of the Tukan family held the post of Mutasalam subdistrict governor longer than did any other family in the 18th and 19th centuries. The rivalry between the Tukans and Nimr family continued until the 1820s. Ani Abd al Hadi of the Abd al Hadi family. The Abd al Hadis were a leading landowning family in the Palestinian districts of Afula, Basin, Janin, and Nablus. Ani established the Hizb al Istikualal Independence Party as a branch of the Pan Arab Party. Rushdie Abd al Hadi joined the British Administrative Service in 1921. Amin Abd al Hadi joined the SMC in 1929, and Tassan Abd al Hadi was mayor of Janin. 
Some family members secretly sold their shares of Zir in village to the Jewish National Fund in July 1930 despite nationalist opposition to such land sales. Tarab Abid al-Hadi feminist and activist was the wife of Ani Abid al-Hadi. Abid al-Hadi palace built by Mahmud Abid al-Hadi in Nablus stands testament to the power and prestige of the family. Other Ayyan were the Khalidi family, al-Dajani family, and the al-Shanti family. The views of the Ayyan and their allies largely shaped the divergent political stances of Palestinian Arabs at the time. British Mandate period In 1918, as the Palestinian Arab national movements gained strength in Jerusalem, Jaffa, Haifa, Acre and Nablus, Arif al-Arif joined Haj Amin, his brother Fakhri al-Husseini, Ishaq Darwish, Ibrahim Dawish, Jamal al-Husseini, Kamel al-Budiri, and Sheikh Hassan Abu al-Soud in establishing the Arab club. Following the arrival of the British a number of Muslim Christian associations were established in all the major towns. In 1919 they joined together to hold the first Palestine Arab Congress in Jerusalem. Its main platforms were a call for representative government and opposition to the Balfour Declaration. The Faisal Wiseman Agreement led the Palestinian Arab population to reject the Syrian Arab nationalist movement led by Faisal in which many previously placed their hopes and instead to agitate for Palestine to become a separate state, with an Arab majority. To further that objective, they demanded an elected assembly. In 1919, in response to Palestinian Arab fears of the inclusion of the Balfour Declaration to process the secret society al kaf al Sawada, the Black Hand, its name soon changed to al fidaya the Self Sacrificers, was founded. It later played an important role in clandestine anti-British and anti-Zionist activities. The society was run by the al Dajani and al Shani families, with Ibrahim Hamani in charge of training and Isa al Sifri developed a secret code for correspondence. The society was initially based in Jaffa but moved its headquarters to Nablus. The Jerusalem branch was run by Mahmoud Aziz al Khalidi. After the April riots, an event took place that turned the traditional rivalry between the Husseini and Nashashibi clans into a serious rift, with long term consequences for al Husseini and Palestinian nationalism. According to Sir Louis Bowles, great pressure was brought to bear on the military administration from Zionist leaders and officials such as David Yellen, to have the mayor of Jerusalem, Musa Qasim al-Husseini, dismissed, given his presence in the Nabi Musa riots of the previous march. Colonel Storrs, the military governor of Jerusalem, removed him without further inquiry, replacing him with Raghib. This, according to the Palin report, had a profound effect on his co-religionists, definitely confirming the conviction they had already formed from other evidence that the civil administration was the mere puppet of the Zionist organization. The High Commissioner of Palestine, Herbert Samuel, as a counterbalance the Nashashibis gaining the position of mayor of Jerusalem, pardoned Haj Amin and Arif al-Arif and established a Supreme Muslim Sharia Council SMC on 20 December 1921. The SMC was to have authority over all the Muslim waqs religious endowments and sharia religious law courts in Palestine. The members of the council were to be elected by an electoral college and appointed Haj Amin as president of the council with the powers of employment over all Muslim officials throughout Palestine. The Anglo-American committee termed it a powerful political machine. The Haj Amin rarely delegated authority, consequently most of the council's executive work was carried out by Haj Amin. Nepotism and favoritism played a central part to Hajj Amin's tenure as president of the SMC. Amin al Tamimi was appointed as acting president when the Hajj Amin was abroad. The secretaries appointed were Abdallah Shafiq and Muhammad Al Afifi, and from 1928 to 1930, the secretary was Hajj Amin's relative Jamal al Husseini, Saad al Din al Khatib, and later another of the Hajj Amin's relatives, Ali al Husseini, and Ajaj Nuwayhid. Adruz was an advisor. It was during the British Mandate period that politicization of the Wailing Wall occurred. The disturbances at the Wailing Wall in 1928 were repeated in 1929, however the violence in the riots that followed, that left 116 Palestinian Arabs, 133 Jews dead and 339 wounded, were surprising in their intensity and was the first instance that indigenous Sephardi and Mizrahi had been killed. Is ad Din al Qassam established the Black Hand Gang in 1935. Is ad-Din died in a shootout against the British forces. 
He has been popularized in Palestinian nationalist folklore for his fight against Zionism. The Nashashibis broke with the Arab High Committee and Haj Amin shortly after the contents of the Palestine Royal Commission report were released announcing a partition plan. The Great Revolt 1936 1939 was an uprising by Palestinian Arabs in the British Mandate of Palestine in protest against mass Jewish immigration. Abd al Qadir al Husseini, member of the Palestine Arab Party, he served as its secretary general and became editor in chief of the party's paper Al Liwa and other newspapers, including Al Jamia al Islamiyah. In 1938, Abd al Qadir was exiled and in 1939 fled to Iraq where he took part in the Rashid Ali al Gailani coup. Al Hawari, who had started his career as a devoted follower of Haj Amin, broke with the influential Husseini family in the early 1940s. The British had estimated the al Najada paramilitary scout movement, led by Muhammad and Imr al Hawari, strength as 8,000 prior to 1947. The revolt of 1936 39 led to an imbalance of power between the Jewish community and the Palestinian Arab community, as the latter had been substantially disarmed. Al Dash Qadir moved to Egypt in 1946, but secretly returned to Palestine to lead the Army of the Holy War in January 1948, and was killed during hand to hand fighting against Haganah, where AHW captured Castle Hill on the Tel Aviv Jerusalem Road, on 8 April 1948. Al Qadir's death was a factor in the loss of morale among his forces. Ghori, who had no experience of military command, was appointed as commander of the AHW. Fazi al Kawukji, at the head of the Arab Liberation Army, remained as the only prominent military commander. The split in the ranks of the Arab High Committee this was nothing more than a group of traditional notables. Between rejectionists and pro-partitionists led to Haj Amin taking control of the AHC and with the support of the Arab League, rejected the plan. However many Palestinians, principally Nashashibi clan and the Arab Palestinian Communist Party, accepted the plan. Topic: <laughs> After 1948 to 1964. In September 1948, the All-Palestine government was proclaimed in Egyptian-controlled Gaza Strip, and immediately won the support of Arab League members except Jordan. Though jurisdiction of the government was declared to cover the whole of the former mandatory Palestine, its effective jurisdiction was limited to the Gaza Strip. The Prime Minister of the Gaza Ceded Administration was named Ahmed Hilmi Pasha, and the President was named Haj Amin al-Husseini, former chairman of the Arab Higher Committee. The all-Palestine government however lacked any significant authority and was in fact seated in Cairo. In 1959 it was officially merged into the United Arab Republic by the decree of Nasser, crippling any Palestinian hope for self-governance. With the establishment in 1948 of the State of Israel, along with the migration of the Palestinian exodus, the common experience of the Palestinian refugee Arabs was mirrored in a fading of Palestinian identity. The institutions of a Palestinian nationality emerged slowly in the Palestinian refugee diaspora. In 1950 Yasser Arafat founded Itihad Talibat Falastin. After the 1948 Arab-Israeli War, most of the Husseini clan relocated to Jordan and the Gulf states. Many family heads that remained in the Old City and the northern neighborhoods of East Jerusalem fled due to hostility with the Jordanian government, which controlled that part of the city. King Abdullah's assassin was a member of an underground Palestinian organization led by Daoud al Husseini. The Fatah movement, which espoused a Palestinian nationalist ideology in which Palestinians would be liberated by the actions of Palestinian Arabs, was founded in 1954 by members of the Palestinian diaspora principally professionals working in the Gulf states who had been refugees in Gaza and had gone on to study in Cairo or Beirut. The founders included Yasser Arafat who was head of the General Union of Palestinian Students GUPS 1952-56 in Cairo University, Salah Caliph, Khalil al-Wazir, Khalid Yushruti was head of the GUPS in Beirut 1958-62. The emergence of PLO The Palestine Liberation Organization was founded by a meeting of 422 Palestinian national figures in Jerusalem in May 1964, following an earlier decision of the Arab League. Its goal was the liberation of Palestine through armed struggle. The original PLO charter issued on the 28th of May 1964 stated that 
Palestine with its boundaries that existed at the time of the British Mandate is an integral regional unit, and sought to prohibit the existence and activity of Zionism. The Charter also called for a right of return and self determination for Palestinians. Defeat suffered by the Arab states in the June 1967 Six Day War brought the West Bank, East Jerusalem, and the Gaza Strip under Israeli military control. Yasser Arafat claimed the Battle of Karame as a victory in Arabic. Karame means dignity and quickly became a Palestinian national hero, portrayed as one who dared to confront Israel. Masses of young Arabs joined the ranks of his group Fatah. Under pressure, Ahmad Shukiri resigned from the PLO leadership and in July 1969, Fatah joined and soon controlled the PLO. The fierce Palestinian guerrilla fighting and the Jordanian artillery bombardment forced the IDF withdrawal and gave the Palestinian Arabs an important morale boost. Israel was calling their army the Indomitable Army but this was the first chance for Arabs to claim victory after defeat in 1948, 53, and 67. After the battle, Fatah began to engage in communal projects to achieve popular affiliation. After the Battle of Karame there was a subsequent increase in the PLO's strength. In 1974 the PLO called for an independent state in the territory of Mandate Palestine. The group used guerrilla tactics to attack Israel from their bases in Jordan, Lebanon, and Syria, as well as from within the Gaza Strip and West Bank. In 1988, the PLO officially endorsed a two-state solution, with Israel and Palestine living side-by-side -side contingent on specific terms such as making East Jerusalem capital of the Palestinian state and giving Palestinians the right of return to land occupied by Palestinians prior to the 1948 and 1967 wars with Israel. The first Intifada (1987–93) would prove another watershed in Palestinian nationalism, as it brought the Palestinians of the West Bank and Gaza to the fore front of the struggle. The unified national leadership of the uprising Al-Qiyada al-Mu'ada mobilized grassroots support for the uprising. In 1987 the Intifada caught the PLO by surprise, the leadership abroad could only indirectly influence the events, a new local leadership emerged, the UNLU comprising many leading Palestinian factions. The disturbances initially spontaneous soon came under local leadership from groups and organizations loyal to the PLO that operated within the occupied territories, Fatah, the Popular Front, the Democratic Front and the Palestine Communist Party. The UNLU was the focus of the social cohesion that sustained the persistent disturbances. After King Hussein of Jordan proclaimed the administrative and legal separation of the West Bank from Jordan in 1988, the UNLU organized to fill the political vacuum. During the Intifada Hamas replaced the monopoly of the PLO as sole representative of the Palestinian people. Some Israelis had become tired of the constant violence of the first Intifada, and many were willing to take risks for peace. Some wanted to realize the economic benefits in the new global economy. The Gulf War did much to persuade Israelis that the defensive value of territory had been overstated, and that the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait psychologically reduced their sense of security. A renewal of the Israeli-Palestinian quest for peace began at the end of the Cold War as the United States took the lead in international affairs. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, Western observers were optimistic, as Francis Fukuyama wrote in an article, titled, the end of history. The hope was that the end of the Cold War heralded the beginning of a new international order. President George H. W. Bush, in a speech on of September 1990, spoke of a rare opportunity to move toward a new world order, in which the nations of the world, East and West, North and South, can prosper and live in harmony, adding that today the new world is struggling to be born. The demands of these populations were somewhat differing from those of the Palestinian diaspora, which had constituted the main base of the PLO until then, in that they were primarily interested in independence, rather than refugee return. The resulting 1993 Oslo Agreement cemented the belief in a two-state solution in the mainstream Palestinian movement, as opposed to the PLO's original goal, a one-state solution which entailed the destruction of Israel and its replacement with a secular, democratic Palestinian state. 
The idea had first been seriously discussed in the 1970s, and gradually become the unofficial negotiating stance of the PLO leadership under Arafat, but it had still remained a taboo subject for most, until Arafat officially recognized Israel in 1988, under strong pressure from the United States. However, the belief in the ultimate necessity of Israel's destruction and or its Zionist foundation i.e. its existence as specifically Jewish state is still advocated by many, such as the religiously motivated Hamas movement, although no longer by the PLO leadership. <laughs> Palestinian National Authority In 1993, with the transfer of increased control of Muslim holy sites in Jerusalem from Israel to the Palestinians, PLO chairman Yasser Arafat appointed Suleiman Jaabari as Grand Mufti. When he died in 1994, Arafat appointed Ekrima Saeed Sabri. Sabri was removed in 2006 by Palestinian National Authority President Mahmoud Abbas, who was concerned that Sabri was involved too heavily in political matters. Abbas appointed Muhammad Ahmad Hussein, who was perceived as a political moderate. Goals Palestinian statehood Proposals for a Palestinian state refer to the proposed establishment of an independent state for the Palestinian people in Palestine on land that was occupied by Israel since the Six-Day War of 1967 and prior to that year by Egypt Gaza and by Jordan West Bank. The proposals include the Gaza Strip, which is controlled by the Hamas faction of the Palestinian National Authority, the West Bank, which is administered by the Fatah faction of the Palestinian National Authority, and East Jerusalem which is controlled by Israel under a claim of sovereignty. <laughs> From the river to the sea Palestine from the river to the sea was claimed as Palestine by the PLO from its establishment in 1964 until the signing of the Oslo Accords. The PLO claim was originally set on areas, controlled by the State of Israel prior to 1967 war, meaning the combined coastal plain, Galilee, Yisrael Valley, Arava Valley and Negev Desert, but excluding West Bank controlled then by Jordan and Gaza Strip occupied between 1959 and 1967 by Egypt. In a slightly different fashion. Palestine from the river to the sea", is still claimed by Hamas, referring to all areas of former mandatory Palestine. From the river to the sea Arabic, min al -nar -ila al -bar is, and forms part of, a popular political slogan used by Palestinian nationalists. It contains the notion that the land which lies between the River Jordan and the Mediterranean Sea be entirely placed under Arab rule at the cost of the State of Israel, excluding the contested Golan Heights, conquered from Syria in 1967 and unilaterally annexed in 1981. It has been used frequently by Arab leaders and is often chanted at anti Israel demonstrations. The slogan is versatile with numerous variations, including, From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Palestine is ours from the river to the sea. Palestine is Islamic from the river to the sea. Islamic scholars also claim the Mahdi will also declare the slogan in the following format Jerusalem is Arab Muslim, and Palestine all of it, from the river to the sea is Arab Muslim. <laughs> Competing national, political, and religious loyalties Pan-Arabism Some groups within the PLO hold a more pan-Arabist view than Fatah, and Fatah itself has never renounced Arab nationalism in favor of a strictly Palestinian nationalist ideology. Some of the pan-Arabist members justifying their views by claiming that the Palestinian struggle must be the spearhead of a wider, pan-Arab movement. For example, the Marxist PFLP viewed the Palestinian Revolution as the first step to Arab unity as well as inseparable from a global anti-imperialist struggle. This said, however, there seems to be a general consensus among the main Palestinian factions that national liberation takes precedence over other loyalties, including pan-Arabism, Islamism and proletarian internationalism. Source 
Topic: <laughs> Pan-Islamism. In a later repetition of these developments, the pan-Islamic sentiments embodied by the Muslim Brotherhood and other religious movements, would similarly provoke conflict with Palestinian nationalism. About 90% of Palestinians are Sunni Muslims, and while never absent from the rhetoric and thinking of the secularist PLO factions, Islamic political doctrines, or Islamism, didn't become a large part of the Palestinian movement until the 1980s rise of Hamas. By early Islamic thinkers, nationalism had been viewed as an ungodly ideology, substituting the nation for God as an object of worship and reverence. The struggle for Palestine was viewed exclusively through a religious prism, as a struggle to retrieve Muslim land and the holy places of Jerusalem. However, later developments, not least as a result of Muslim sympathy with the Palestinian struggle, led to many Islamic movements accepting nationalism as a legitimate ideology. In the case of Hamas, the Palestinian offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood, Palestinian nationalism has almost completely fused with the ideologically pan-Islamic sentiments originally held by the Islamists. See also Concepts and events 1936–39 Arab Revolt in Palestine History of Palestine Greater Palestine Palestinian government Palestinian political violence State of Palestine Timeline of the name, Palestine Views of Palestinian statehood Individuals Abd al-Qadir al-Husayni Grand Mufti of Jerusalem Khalil al-Sakakini Musa al-Husayni Yusuf al-Khalidi Zuhair Mohsen <laughs>